Hello and welcome to my channel, Vice Rhino here. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a quick video claiming to have debunked radiometric dating in three minutes. Let's see what they have to say, but first, an announcement. I've signed up for Patreon. I don't really expect anyone to support me over there, but now the option is there should you want it. I mean, I'm not going to turn into one of those YouTubers It's like, oh please go to my Patreon and give me money so I can get a better microphone. I mean, my mic's pretty bad and I will be upgrading in the future, but for now, you know, it does the job, whatever. Um, I just want to make sure everybody knows, and I don't really care how many Twitter followers I have, but there are times when I want to shoot out a quick update rather than make a whole video about it here. Uh, so you can also follow me on Twitter if you want channel updates. I also troll Eric Hovind at times, and, uh, you know, that can be fun. But uh, anyways, back to the video. The Bible has God miraculously creating the world and everything in it in just six days, about 6,000 years ago. And since there is, in fact, such a huge amount of evidence to suggest that the Earth is over 4 billion years old, then there are three options here. Either God is a liar, planting false evidence to make it look like things were done completely differently from how he actually did it. Uh, two, God is really bad at metaphors, having messed up the evolutionary order of the animals in his metaphor, among other mistakes. Or three, God as depicted in the Bible just doesn't exist. But the theory of evolution has a much different time scale, taking millions of years to go from goo to me and you by way of the zoo. I'll give you credit, that's a neat little pithy statement, but it is grossly oversimplified. Suffice it to say for now that there is plenty of evidence to back it up. Which view is correct? My money's on the one with a shit ton of evidence supporting it. Well, to be honest, both views require faith because no one was there thousands or millions of years ago to observe how it all got started. No, no one was there. But that doesn't mean the evidence isn't there. You want evidence for large timescales that you can see with your own eyes? Look at the night sky. The furthest star you can see with the naked eye is V762 Cass at 16,308 light years away. That means the light we are seeing from that star had to travel towards us for 16,308 years before reaching us. So right there, the universe has to be older than the creation of 6 to 10,000 years. Now bust out a telescope and take a peek at the Andromeda galaxy. It is 2.5 million light years away, meaning that for us to see it, the universe must be at least 2.5 million years old. And that's the closest galaxy to ours, an object that can be seen with an amateur telescope without having to rely on the evolutionists for viewing. But then if we go to Hubble, the furthest object seen is 13.4 billion light years away, meaning that for the light to have reached Earth, the universe must be at least 13.4 billion years old. And this is just one field of many that actively demonstrate that our universe has been around for billions of years. But can the idea of millions of years of evolution be scientifically validated? Can we really prove this idea of deep time using the same observational science we use for making medicine and putting people on the moon? Yes. Yes, we can. Validation is the process of confirming what is believed to be true by what can be observed to be true. I would like to alter that definition a bit. Validation is the process of confirming what is thought to be true by what can be demonstrated to be true. You don't have to personally live for billions of years in order to demonstrate that the universe has existed for billions of years. And I take issue with the word belief, as I am of the school of thought that you do not choose your beliefs. You can have some control over your thoughts, but your beliefs simply are what they are. They can change based on experience, but they cannot be controlled. If you don't believe me, then try believing that dropping a rock will result in it being launched into orbit. Has this ever been done for radiometric dating? The process that gives us the very idea of long ages? While I am no scientist, I do know that scientists have been trying to interfere with the decay rate of various isotopes, uh, the ones used for radiometric dating, since Marie Curie's time, and they have never been successful. The closest they have ever come was in 2010 when there was a minuscule fluctuation in the detected decay rate during a solar flare. However, after further study, it was determined that the fluctuation was due to the solar flare affecting the instruments rather than the isotopes. Actually, long ages and radiometric dating hasn't stood up to the validation test. Radiometric dating has never been validated against the absolute known ages of rocks. Just looking at those ages, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that those particular dates 
were using the wrong dating method to determine their age. You're not actually providing a source for that, so I can't check it. But I know that if you use the wrong dating method, you'll get the wrong numbers. For instance, potassium argon dating is unreliable when dating samples that are younger than 6,000 years because the half-life of potassium is so large. It's, uh, it's 1.25 million years for potassium-40. It can be done, but you must be incredibly precise. There are several things that could go wrong with dating young samples that will affect the apparent ages of those samples. I will give you credit, though. Most creationists go straight for the carbon dating because it's so much easier to manipulate into looking ridiculous. Let us explain. Consider Mount St. Helens. This volcano erupted in the 1980s, giving scientists the opportunity to date the rocks that were formed from the eruption. Yeah, I thought you might be going here. That's why I specifically mentioned potassium argon dating. That's the dating method that Dr. Steve Austin of the Institute for Creation Research, a totally unbiased organization, used when dating the samples that were only a few years old. The results? Five different ages, all between 350,000 and 2.8 million years old, for rocks that we know were less than 30 years old. This discrepancy happens all the time in radiometric dating studies. It happens all the time when creationist scientists send samples to be tested using methods that are inappropriate for the sample's age. Would you like to know what's going on? There are three main reasons why the samples would give older dates than is accurate. Firstly, potassium argon and argon argon dating often have trouble with excess argon being trapped in the minerals during the melting process and not degassing before they solidify. This is a known issue with, the, with this dating method, and there are ways of controlling for it. A key phrase in the study I found about excess argon is that melt inclusions are less dominant but become critical in dating younger samples. Second, the samples could have been contaminated. Not that really hard to understand. Third, if the excess argon was accounted for and the samples were not contaminated, the dates could actually be accurate. The different minerals could have grown in the melt at different times, and the crystallization process could have taken a few million years. Also, older foreign rocks and minerals could have been incorporated into the melt as it rose to the surface. Any or all three of these could be contributing factors to the uh, ages that he got from the dating method he used. Uh, so in other words, the dates that he got for these samples are not surprising at all to anyone who understands how radiometric dating actually works. In fact, there has never been a radiometric dating analysis that simply produces ages that validate to the known ages of rocks. And if radiometric dating doesn't work for rocks of known ages, why do we trust it for rocks of unknown ages? When dating something using any of the 40 plus radiometric dating methods, it is general good practice to use more than one method of dating and to collect as much information about the sample as possible. In other words, geologists have more than one way of dating old samples, and they're not all exclusively radiometric. And these methods almost always agree on the age of the sample. The reason we don't rely on one method is because contamination does happen. They will typically test a sample using multiple methods, and if one test yields results that are significantly different from the other tests, they can be reasonably sure that there was contamination of some kind that affected that one test. But if, say, five different dating methods all agree within a certain margin for error, we can be reasonably certain that they are correct. This is an incredible oversimplification, but I understand just enough of it to give me confidence that the people who spend their entire lives studying geology know what they're doing. So the next time you hear millions of years ago this happened or that, just ask, how do you know that for sure? Any intellectually honest person will admit that we cannot know anything 100% certainly. But some things are 99.9% .9 certain due to the mountains of evidence piled in their favor. And if radiometric dating is the answer given, just ask, are you aware of a study where the radiometric age of a rock agreed with the known age of the rock? Well, two can play at that game. Are you aware of a peer-reviewed study published in a reputable journal where evidence was shown in favor of an Earth that is less than 10,000 years old? And you'll find the answer will undoubtedly be no. Same for my question. God wrote with his own hand that he created the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them in just six ordinary days. He wrote it with his own hand? Really? I thought most Christians thought those books were written by Moses. Like they'll say, inspired by God, but they'll, they know that human beings actually wrote the book. That's a very interesting view. I'd like you to go into more detail on that, please. 
The genealogies in Genesis lead us straight back to Adam, just about 6,000 years ago. Have you ever noticed how hard the world pushes the idea of millions of years? We don't push it hard, insert immature sex joke here. We just go where the evidence leads us, and the evidence is overwhelmingly in favor of a several billion year old Earth. Books, movies, museums, schools, it's everywhere. But does any of this even matter? Yes, of course it does. Right now, the leader of one of the most powerful nations in the world is a climate change denier. If the general population of the United States was better informed on important scientific information, that would not have happened. Well, consider this. Many people will only consider the Bible's message if they believe the Bible to be credible, both historically and scientifically. Absolutely, I agree with that statement 100%. And since it is not credible, both historically and scientifically, I do not accept the Bible as being true. Sure, it got a few details right occasionally, but so did Homer's Iliad. That doesn't make the whole thing true. Each person's eternity, either in heaven or hell, depends on what they believe about the risen Christ. And if an omnipotent being actually existed and wanted me to believe that his human son rose from the dead, he could find a way to get me to believe it without violating my free will. If he can't do that, then he's not omnipotent. If he can, but chooses not to, and then punishes me for not believing, then he's a dick. And how do we know about this? Well, it's in the Bible. Well, there are a lot of things in the Bible. According to the Bible, I should have been stoned to death as a teenager because I didn't obey my parents all the time. According to the Bible, I can get myself a second wife by raping an unmarried teenager and paying her dad. According to the Bible, I can beat my slaves as brutally as I want as long as they take more than two days to die from the beating. According to the Bible, koalas somehow migrated from Australia to the Middle East and then back again without leaving a single trace. I could do this all day. And if people don't believe the Bible got it right on the first page, who's going to trust the rest? Exactly. That was a nice, succinct way of describing why atheists don't believe. So, because it takes faith to believe in either the Bible or the world's view of this distant past. Faith is not required when there is evidence, so I'll give you another bit. Remember in February of 2016 when LIGO announced that they had detected gravitational waves? These waves were predicted three times, once in 1893 by Oliver Heaviside using an analogy between the inverse square law and gravitation and electricity, again in 1905 by Henry Poincaré, who proposed that they would be emanated from a body and propagated at the speed of light because of the Lorentz transformations, and again in 1916 by Albert Einstein based on his theory of general relativity. Each time the prediction was made, the details became more specific, and these predictions rely on the universe being much older than the young Earth creationist model, and were the creationist model accurate, there would have been no results from LIGO. The ESA is now preparing to launch an interferometer, which works along the same principles as LIGO, into orbit by 2034, and they have made several predictions about what this one will be able to detect. This is one of many reasons scientists, even Christian ones, do not rely on the Bible when doing their work. There is no predictive capability in the Bible. Not one scientific discovery in the history of mankind originated from the Bible, and most of what the Bible has to say about science is demonstrably wrong, or has to be warped way beyond reason to make it fit with reality. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of scientific fields that have made accurate predictions based on the age of the universe. These fields would be completely different if the universe were only six to ten thousand years old. So don't tell me I need faith to know that the universe is older than the Bible claims. Is it a better choice to trust God or fallible man? Well, since fallible man wrote a fallible book describing a fallible God, which probably doesn't even exist in the first place, my money's going on the fallible human beings who eliminated smallpox, put men on the moon, developed the internet, and put a device in all our pockets that is more powerful than any of the computers used to put the men on the moon and develop the internet. Humans can be pretty fantastic when we put our minds to it. That's the end of their video, the rest is them telling you to download their app. See you next time. When there was a minuscule fluck you, fluck you, fluck you.